Stocks our strategists feel are poised to deliver positive returns are featured now in their Top Stock Picks of the Week. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's Top Stock Picks with Dave Bartosiak and myself, Jeremy Mullen. Today, I will be doing LoveSack, ticker symbol L-O-V-E. The stock is a Zacks rank number one strong buy that is a direct-to-consumer specialty furniture brand. LoveSack has over 100 retail showrooms and relies on an e-commerce delivery model in which the majority of its current sales are from its proprietary platform called Sactionals. These are washable, changeable, reconfigurable, and FedEx shippable solutions for large upholstered seating. Now, the stock did very well during the pandemic, moving for, from a low of $4 during the COVID crash to $95 in April of last year. The stock has been very volatile since those highs, and investors can't seem to make up their mind on how to value this company. Like many other companies, the big issue might come down to supply chain problems. However, last quarter's EPS proved their earnings numbers are certainly there. So in the end, we get this volatile price action as investors can't make up their mind on the value of the stock. Now let's take a look at this company, this stock, and see if LoveSag just isn't getting the love that it should be. Before we get into the earnings and estimates, let's talk more about the company. Uh, we can see it's valued under a billion dollars at $843 million. Okay, we have Zach style scores of F in value and growth and D in momentum. So issues with the value scores here. So digging into that, you can see the PE is pretty high. It's 41. And the growth is going to be because of the volatile and earnings, it kind of goes back and forth. So the growth store, uh, growth score is low. Now, the, the evaluation story is an issue, especially lately. Uh, the first week of the year, value stocks were or value stocks were bought. And anything with a high valuation was sold. So you can kind of see, you know, 22, why it would come uh, down a lot. Um, so that is a concern, of course. But looking at earnings, and we'll dig into, into those in the estimates, we see just a nice track record. And you can see last quarter on December 8th, 142% EPS beat. Within that quarter, the company saw a strong start to the holiday season, and same source sales were up 47%. Showroom count is now 135 versus 107 a year ago. So you can see there's some growth within that retail showroom. Uh, management commented that they are making good progress on the launch of their new Stealth Tech embedded surround system. This is a sound system that is actually built into the couch. And I went on their website, it's a picture of these. And you can kind of see uh, these couches, they have speakers actually built into them. These are wireless that connect to your uh, TV. And you can imagine sitting on this big couch and just getting blasted from these these sound systems that are built in. Now check out this these price points, rather high. These are luxury niche items. So um, the growth is really going to be coming from if these are going to be popular or not. And I I kind of like it. I might buy one of these things. They're pretty cool. Um, and one of the other cool things is you can just build it however you want. If you just want a small one, you want a bigger one, or you want a whole sectional here. Um, you can kind of do whatever you want with these. So pretty neat stuff from a love stack in this new uh, technology. Um, during the call, they also commented they're, they are confident that their in-stock position will meet fourth quarter demand. So they'll have enough stuff to sell, essentially. Uh, that comment calmed fears of investors who were nervous about the supply chain, and the stock actually shot up 30%. So you can kind of see this move up here, a uh, pretty big move. If we look back at a chart, Kind of see how the um, performance has held up over the last uh, few quarters. There we are. It's coming. Okay, here we go. So uh, you can see kind of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight beats there. And really, the beats are getting bigger in magnitude. You can see 123, triple digit, 572, 142, whereas before they were a little smaller. So some momentum with earnings really growing. Uh, after the report, some analysts came out with aggressive price targets. Canaccord Genuity, $104 price target. Oppenheimer raised their target to 95 from 85. Since earnings, estimates have been coming down for the, for the short term. So some analysts aren't as bullish. We see 71 to 54 cents over the last 60 days going down here as well. But if you look at the current year and next year, we see some uh, uh, big jumps in earnings estimates here. So looking at the back half of the year, we see some uh, more progress on uh, earnings power there. 
Um, unfortunately for the bulls, the stock fell right back to where it was before earnings, and we have continued uh, lower into 22, uh, 2022. Now 35% below those post earnings highs, the bulls are wondering when this bleeding will stop. Let's take a look at the charts and see if we can find the answer. So here's the chart going all the way back to its debut IPO. Uh, as you can see, it took off in 2019. Um, we had some good earnings, but then it just bled out until the COVID lows. Uh, from there, people started buying couches. Uh, you guys know the story. Everybody's stuck at home. They want to get comfortable, buy couches. So uh, we ripped from that $4 level all the way to 95. We had that just a crazy good quarter there. But then we pulled back, pulled back into the 61.8% retracement. If you guys know what I do, I like the fibs. So this Fibonacci level held and got a nice bounce. However, uh, the recent Omicron fears, the recent um, selling uh, supply chain issues, the recent crush value um, have given excuse for the stock to come back down to this level. But if you see, this is some long-term support. So let's zoom in and see what's going on. Um, this $50 level is key, all right? And if the market does sell off more, you might get a flush of this. But what I would want to see is if these stops are run below 50 is for it to come right back in here and then maintain this momentum. Then you can really, really buy it. But yeah, I think this is a good entry point as well. We can get in here and see what happens if 50 comes down. Because if it doesn't come down, we might miss a move back up to this 21-day moving average, which is a nice little trade. And uh, longer term, you want to be focused on that price target that I showed you back here, which I have at 113. So neat. this is the first goal over the 21 day. The 200 day is crucial. And this, if we get back over here, we can really start to rip up into the end of the year. Now, this 200 day hasn't been a big barometer. It's cracked and uh, cut through multiple times. But I think this uh, one more time through, we can finally say the bulls are in control and we can get those. Uh, targets up near the 100. So right now, a little cautious because of the market situation, but I like uh, this trade setup, especially if we get over that $70 level. Okay, that's it for me and my top stock pick, Love Sack. Here is Dave with his. Hey, everybody. Dave Bartosiak here with my top stock pick of the week, and I'm looking at Broadcom, ticker AVGO. Why would Broadcom have a ticker of AVGO? Well, a while back, they had a merger with a company called Avago, and the result was Broadcom, but they kept the old ticker. Zach's rank number one strong buy right now. The style score is not that great, I suppose. A D for value, a C for growth, a C for momentum. Help it round out with a VGM composite score of C. It is in the electronics semiconductors industry, which ranks in the top 38% of our Zach's industry rank. Let's take a look at the detailed estimates here. It gives you some ideas of what's happened in the past. So last EPS surprise, not that surprising, just 0.77 to the upside. Right now there's an earnings ESP that's negative. So what that means is that analysts aren't really expecting a big earnings beat out of the stock when they report in March. We're not too worried about that. There's a lot of time between now and then. Looking at the sales, the current year has been great. 11.58% revenue growth for the current year. Look at next year, still going to be a little bit of growth, but it's going to slow to 4.7. Translate that over the earnings side, 17.92% growth for the current year, 9.87 for next year. So that's that's a pretty good thing to see that the revenue growth is translating over to earnings growth, so margins should be getting a little bit better. But here's really what I like to see is the bullish nature of these earnings estimates over the last 60 days. Eight analysts pushing to the upside for the current quarter and next quarter, 12 for the current year, four for next year. Then when you take a look at this magnitude and the consensus estimate trend, you see how that showed up. So 754 all the way to 815, 732 to 784, 3101 to 3303, and 3331 to 3629. So those are some really good positive moves there. The one last thing I want to take a look at my favorite chart on Zax.com is the price consensus and EPS surprise chart. This is really where you get a feel for the health of a stock over the long term. So these little green arrows are earnings beats. If there was a red arrow here, it would be a mess. So if you notice, over the course of the last five years, you do not have an earnings miss. That's a good thing. 
these multicolored lines represent the evolution of our Zach's consensus estimates over time. And you can see a pretty consistent pattern that they under promise and then over deliver on their earnings. And the gaps between these lines right here represents growth. So you still have growth. You got this beautiful bottom left to top right move in earnings that's helping pull the stock price along. So that's why I am naming Broadcom ticker AVGO my top stock pick of the week. So that's it for my top stock pick of the week. But you guys should check out Zax.com slash promo for this week's promotion here on Zax Ultimate and the 30-day all access to our buys and sells for only $1. So that's all I have here for Dave Bartosiak and Jeremy Mullen. We'll see you guys next week.